So do you want to run successful Facebook and Instagram ads in 2022? If your answer is yes, watch this video. Running successful Facebook and Instagram ads is not easy, especially after iOS 14 update. I know that many of you might be struggling to make their campaigns profitable. So don't worry, in this video you will know exactly how to set up your ad account and how to structure your campaigns to ensure that your ads are successful in 2022. Hi there, I am Rehab and on this YouTube channel I share with you videos related to e-commerce, entrepreneurship and more. And today's video is a Facebook ads mini course for e-commerce stores. This video is relevant to any e-commerce store regardless of the niche, the business size or the budget. I will be dividing this topic over four different points and four of them are extremely important so make sure to watch this video up until the end. In the first part of this video, we are going to discuss all the things that you must do before starting to run your ads. And they are quite a bit. The first thing you should ever start with is to do your market research. You should first start at understanding the market and understanding your competitors in order to be able to create better ads that can attract the audience toward your products. So how do you do that? Well, you start first by creating your competitors list. If you already have in mind some competitors, you can go and directly research them inside of Facebook Ads Library. Facebook Ads Library is a tool provided by Facebook that allows you to check all the ads running on the platform. So you can see everybody's ads, which is amazing because this will help you to understand what kind of formats, ad copies, headlines, so on are working for your audience. And if you don't know who your competitors are, you must create your competitors list. And in order to do that, I usually go to Google and type there my main niche keywords or any keyword that's directly related to my products. When I do that inside of Google Shopping, I can see all the brands advertising on this keyword. So I can see all the brands in my niche. I go to their websites and I check out inside of Facebook ads library if they are running any ads. When you are checking your competitors inside of Facebook ads library, I recommend you to take care of all the details. So you need to know what kind of formats are working. Are they using too many videos or too many photos? Or maybe you are using short copies or long copies? What kind of headlines or offers or unique selling propositions they are offering? These things will help you to understand what's working. And in order to know what are the best performing ads, I highly recommend you whenever you are checking someone inside of Facebook ads library to scroll down further because in this way you will see the oldest ads. The oldest ads are usually the most powerful one because they are not still in the testing phase. They are already working. That's why they are still running maybe for months or maybe for weeks. So make sure to do this exercise. It's very important and it will help you to understand what kind of ads you must create and it will greatly help you to run successful Facebook ads campaigns. So here I am inside of Facebook ads library and the first thing I need to change is the location because I need to see the ad running in all countries. I will start by selecting all. For ad categories, I will also select all ads and in here I will just type the brand name. I will name any famous brand like Nike for example to show you their ads. When I select Nike, I can see all the running ads in all countries. So I can go in here and check all the ads. I can also see one specific ad in detail like this, or I can go back in here and I can filter uh, those ads by language, for example, or by platform and so on. After finishing with market research, we move on to the next step and it is to identify your potential customers or let's say to define your customer avatar or avatars. It's very important to understand your potential customers very well before starting to sell them. Because when you understand them well, you will be able to speak to them in a more efficient way and you will be able to find them more easily on Facebook. On Facebook, we target people based on their interests or their behaviors. So let's say, for example, you are selling yoga mats. So for example, you can go to Facebook and you can target people who are interested in yoga. In this way, you will make sure that people who are seeing your ads are people who might care about yoga mats. Well, yoga is a very broad topic, so please don't go and use this interest. You must be searching for more, uh, let's say, dedicated interests that you know will get you better results. But this was a very simple example. 
when you know your potential customers well, you know how to target them on Facebook and how to find them on Facebook. So taking, for example, the yoga example, instead of only using yoga as interest, which is a very broad interest, you can go, for example, and use the apps that, uh, that usually show yoga workouts, or maybe use special brands that sell yoga outfits, or maybe uh, target uh, websites who do yoga workouts and so on. When you know your potential customer well, this can help you to come out with interests that they are only relevant for your exact potential customer. And this is extremely important because instead of targeting anyone who's interested in yoga, you will make sure that you are targeting people who might be buying your product. So try to understand your customer avatar very well before starting to run your ads. Understand what do they love? What do they hate? Understand what kind of blogs, of magazines, of movies do they like? Try to know everything about them because in this way, you will be able to sell them. After understanding your potential customers, you need to understand your products. You need to define very well the benefits of your products and how you are going to make those benefits relevant for your potential customers. Remember, when you are selling anything, you need to convince your customers in order to be able to make them buy from you. So you need to understand how your products are going to make your customers' lives better. Without understanding the benefits of your products, it's very hard to sell them. So create a benefit list for your product because we are going to use those benefits to sell your products on Facebook. Now, after doing all of that, we move on to the next step and it is a very important step and it is to optimize your landing pages. Most of the times when your ads are not working, it's not because of your ads, it's because of your landing page or your product or your offer. Well, believe me, this is the case most of the time. When you use Facebook ads, you must keep in mind that the job of your ads is not to make the sale. The job of your ad is to make someone leave Facebook and Instagram and move to your store. That's the only work that you should be expecting from your ads. Well, yes, definitely they can help to convince people to buy from you, but this is not their job. Their job is to stop someone from exploring Instagram feed or exploring Instagram stories and click on the link and go to the store. So whenever you are asking yourself why your ads are not working, start by asking yourself if your landing pages are doing their job. So optimize your landing pages so you make sure that when someone goes from Instagram and Facebook toward your store, you are able to convince them to buy from you. If you want to know more about how to optimize your product pages and your store, I highly recommend you to check this playlist on this YouTube channel. It will greatly help you to understand how to optimize your store and your product pages and how you can increase your conversion rate. If you have a conversion rate of 1%, this means out of 100%, you can only convince one person to buy from you. But if you have a conversion rate of 2%, this means that out of 100%, you can actually convince two people. So your conversion rate is very important and I need you to focus on it before starting to run your ads. So optimize your store, make sure that your store is performing very well before starting to run your ads. And also there is something very important that you must do before starting to run your ads and it is to set up your email marketing system. Setting up your email marketing system will help you to retain your customers, to retain your leads and to increase your conversion rate. When someone visits your store, there are two options. Either they buy from you or they leave without buying. Okay, in case they left, you must be doing your best at collecting their emails or their phone numbers in order to be able to contact them in the future and convince them to buy from you. On average, people need up to eight touch points in order to buy something online. Well, yeah, eight touch points. So if you are going to create these eight touch points and if you want to maximize your process, it's better to rely on a strong email marketing system where you can contact your leads, people who left their emails or their phone numbers through emails and SMSs. You can't only rely on Facebook ads because the cost is high in there, so it's better to create different touch points using other platforms and other tools such as email marketing and SMS marketing. And if you are wondering how you are going to create your email marketing system, well, I have two YouTube videos on this channel that can greatly help you to create your system easily and quickly. So don't forget to check them out after watching this video. 
After creating your business foundations, you must prepare your creatives. And here I mean everything, the videos, the photos, the text, everything. You need to prepare all of these things before setting up your campaigns because you need to fill all of these information inside of your campaigns. I'm going to talk about creatives in details in this video, so make sure to stay with me until we reach that part. Now, if you are wondering how you are going to create professional video ads while you don't know anything about video editing or from where to source the music, the images, the videos, you don't know anything about animations, transitions, and so on, well, I have the perfect solution for you. And the solution is an online tool called InVideo. This tool is perfect for anyone who doesn't know anything about video editing and most importantly, doesn't want to learn anything about Premiere Pro or After Effects or any complicated software like those. Well, InVideo is an online platform that's meant to create and edit videos. In it, you will find up to 5,000 templates that you can start working with. And you can use it not only to create your Facebook ads and your Instagram ads, but also for your YouTube channel or for your Instagram profiles or to create any kind of video content. It's amazing, especially for someone starting out because it's very user friendly and everything is in front of you. As I told you before, you have access to more than 5,000 templates that you can start with, and all of the templates are available in the three different dimensions. So you have the wide dimension, the square, and the vertical dimension for stories. Also, all the templates are adjustable and you can mix between different templates. So let's say, for example, I liked a scene from the first template. I can mix it with another scene from another template. As you can see, the interface is very easy. On the left in here, you can find all the resources divided by sections. So you can find the videos, you can find images, you can find the music, you can find the stickers, you can add text, anything else. And in here you have the timeline in order to modify your video. So if you want to change the duration of the text, change the position of an image, change when a text appear and when a text disappear, you can change it in here. Also, you can add transitions between your different scenes and you can add animations for all of your elements. I want to mention that you can use all the resources inside of InVideo and they are at your disposal so you don't have any problem with the copyrights because when you sign up to InVideo and it's only $15 per month and I'm going to tell you how we can make it even lower than $15 per month but just stay with me. When you sign up to InVideo you can use all of their resources inside of your ads without facing any copyright problem. So you can use the music, the videos, the images, everything. Well, I always recommend that you shoot your own content, but if you are dropshipping, if you don't have the products in hand, if you are not very good with photo shooting, these templates can be very helpful for you because they can help you to create very professional videos within seconds. When you sign up to InVideo using the link you will find below in the description, and when you use the coupon code I have also mentioned in the description, you will get a 25% discount for your membership. So make sure to try it out, it's extremely easy and it will help you to create amazing videos for your ads. I will assume that you already have a Facebook ad account. If not, it's not a problem, you can create one in just seconds. When you are just starting out, Facebook only allows you to create one ad account. And you can't change the currency of the ad account after creating it, so make sure that you are choosing the right currency, the same one you are using in your bank account or in your payment methods. After creating your ad account, you must fill out all the business information inside of Facebook Business Manager. This is actually very important because Facebook wants to make sure that your business is legal and this will make Facebook trust you more. And I also recommend you to have two different payment methods for your ad account. In this way, Facebook will always have a way to bill you and you will not be facing any problem because of that. Also, before running your ads, you must make sure that you have added your pixel to your Shopify store and you have set up your Instagram shop and your Facebook shop. If you don't know how to do that, you can check out this video on this YouTube channel. It will show you exactly how to do that. Well, this is actually very important because it will help you to run catalog sales and it will help you to make sure that your pixel is well integrated with your store. After doing that, you must verify your domain and finally, you must set up your aggregated event inside of Facebook Events Manager. Also, if you want to know how to do that, you can check out this video on this YouTube channel. It will show you exactly how to do that. 
I will make sure to create a playlist of all the videos that you need and that I have mentioned inside of this video so you don't get lost. So now that you have finished everything, let's move to my ads manager and let me show you how you are going to set up your ad account. Here I am inside of Facebook Business Suite. If you are planning to run ads for your business, I highly recommend you to create an account for your business inside of Facebook Business Suite. You will be able to manage many aspects of your business in addition to your ads in this platform. Go in here to settings and from here go to more business settings in order to access all of your business settings and inside of it you will see everything the pixel the ad accounts the pages the profiles you are managing and so on i'm going to add accounts and from here i'm going to click on open an ads manager so this is my ad account and it's brand new i don't have any running campaign in here as you can see, the ad account is divided into three levels. You have first the campaigns, the ad sets, and the ads. Under each campaign, you can have multiple ad sets, and under each ad set, you can have multiple ads. I'm gonna tell you how many ad sets you should have under each campaign and how many ads you should have under each ad set in a few minutes. After working with so many e-commerce brands and auditing so many Facebook ads accounts, I have noticed that many people tend to complicate their ad accounts by creating too many campaigns. But in reality, you don't need that. Two campaigns or three campaigns can be more than enough. Your campaigns should cover the different steps of your sales funnel. So you can have one campaign for the acquisition, one campaign for the middle of funnel, and one campaign for the bottom of funnel. If you don't know what I'm talking about, wait with me, I'm gonna explain this a little bit more. Well, the acquisition campaign is a campaign dedicated for people who don't know anything about your brand. We call this campaign top of funnel campaign and it's meant to attract new people toward your brand. This campaign is extremely important because if you are using Facebook ads, most probably you are using them because you want to scale your business. So you want to put your brand in front of new people and new audiences. That's why when we are dividing our budget, we put our biggest amount on the top of funnel campaigns or on the acquisition campaigns. And you only need one acquisition campaign. Then you can have a middle of funnel campaign and it's dedicated for people who know your brand but didn't take any serious action toward buying from you. So you can target people who visited your store or people who engaged with your Instagram page or maybe people who viewed your videos and so on. The third campaign you must have is the retargeting campaign or the bottom of funnel campaign. Actually, both the middle of funnel and the bottom of funnel campaigns are retargeting campaigns, but the strongest one is the bottom of funnel campaign because in this campaign, we target people who actually took serious actions toward buying from you. So either they added to cart or maybe initiated checkout or maybe even your old customers. When we are dividing our budget, we only allocate maybe 10% or 15% or maybe 20% to your retargeting campaigns and that's it. It's also very important to note that if your business is still small, you don't need to have three different campaigns. You can only have two campaigns, one acquisition campaign and one retargeting campaign and that's it. And inside of your retargeting campaign, you retarget everyone who's interested in your brand. So you retarget people who visited your Instagram profile, you retarget people who added to cart, view content, everything. You combine all of your audiences inside of your retargeting campaign. I'm back now to my ads manager and I will start by creating the first campaign, which is the acquisition campaign. I will click here on create. And as you can see, the first thing I need to do is to define my campaign objective. And the objectives in here are divided by the funnel steps. So first you have the awareness, second you have the consideration, and third you have the conversion. Well, here many people make the mistake of choosing one of these objectives from here. They think that since this is an acquisition campaign, I should start with something like traffic or like reach or like brand awareness. Well, I'm not saying that those objectives are bad, but they are not the perfect, the perfect choice for someone who's running ads for an e-commerce store. As an e-commerce store owner, what you are aiming for are purchases. So you should tell Facebook that you are aiming for purchases by choosing the conversion objective. Under the conversion objective, you have multiple sub objectives, let's say like uh, view content, add to cart, initiated checkout, and purchase. 
We are going to discuss when you are going to use each one of them, why sometimes it's better to use view content over purchases later on in this video when we are going to discuss the budget. I'm going here to start with conversion. You can name your campaign from here or not. I'm, going, I'm not going to name it. I'm going to click on continue. So this is my campaign in here. This is my ad set and this is my ads. Okay, for the campaign name, feel free to name the campaign the way you wish, but I like to have like some kind of template to follow in order to be able to identify easily my campaigns. Okay, I'm going to use my template. And as you can see in here, I like to add the team member name, the funnel step, the stage, and the offer or product I am selling. Okay, so you can go in here, fill everything, anything you wish. So you can go in here, fill the name you wish, it's up to you. I'm gonna simply name it now for the sake of example. As simple as that. Under that, you need to tell Facebook if your ads are under any of these categories. So, are you doing any of these ads? I don't think this is the case, so you simply skip this step. In here, you need to decide the auction type and so on. You don't want to play with this. You will keep it as it is. It's auction. You don't have any other option, actually. And in here, you need to decide your campaign objective. This is the thing we have made in a previous step, in the previous step, but you can still come in here and edit the objective from here. I'm gonna keep it conversion and in here, as you can see, you can also in here change the spending limit of your campaign. I'm not going also to touch that, I'm going simply to scroll. In here, you can do A-B testing. I don't use the A-B testing of Facebook. And in here, you can decide whether you want to do CBO campaign or ABO campaign. When you click here on on, you are telling Facebook, I'm gonna give you the budget at the campaign level and you can take the budget and divide it between my different ad sets. Okay, in the ad sets, we target the audiences we are considering as our potential customers. So when you put the budget in here, you are telling Facebook that the budget is for all the campaign and that Facebook can optimize how to divide the budget. This is something that's good, but usually it's better at the retargeting phase or when your pixel is more trained and your ad account has been running for a while, you're already seeing results, the algorithm knows your potential customers and already giving you good results. So for now, I'm going to keep this off and I'm going to define the budget at the ad set level. This means that I will give each ad set the dedicated budget. So Facebook must respect this budget. In this way, you will be able to know which ad set is performing better than the other ad sets and how you can optimize your campaigns in a better way. In my opinion, CBO is a good option when your pixel is already trained or when you are doing retargeting campaigns. So maybe in the future when you have a good ad account, you have already run ads for a while, you have a good number of purchases, you can definitely move to CBO as an option for your top of level campaign. But for now, I recommend you to start with ABO, especially in the testing phase. It's very important to note that CBO campaigns should be treated in a different way than ABO campaigns. When you optimize your CBO campaigns, you must read the results at the campaign level, okay? Because Facebook is optimizing the whole campaign, so you shouldn't be stopping an ad set if the whole campaign is working fine. Because Facebook is already optimizing the budget in a way to divide it between the ad set, so the best performing ad set is taking most of your budget. Well, in a ABO campaign, you have more control, you can shut down ad sets if they are not working fine, and they shouldn't be affecting the campaign performance. So if a CBO campaign is performing well, just keep it running without touching the ad sets. But with an ABO campaign, you can optimize, you can shut down uh, ad sets, it's totally fine. You will not be changing anything in the campaign optimization. So here I am at the ad set level and also when it comes to naming, I highly recommend you to name your ad sets in a very clear way so you can be able to understand what this ad set is about without the need to access this ad set every time. So first you start by naming your ad set, then in here you need to decide the location of your conversion event. In our case, it's the website. 
After that, you need to decide the, to, to choose the pixel. That's why you must be linking your pixel to your Shopify account. After choosing the pixel, you must define the conversion event. And here you can either choose purchase or you can choose view content or you can choose add to cart and so on. After choosing your pixel, you need to choose your conversion event. Under conversion, you can find all the events that might happen inside of a Shopify store or an e-commerce store. So you have purchase, you have add to cart, you have initiated checkout, you have view content, you have lead. It depends on the aggregated events you have installed inside of the events manager. But usually those are the events you can find inside of a, an e-commerce store. Now the question is, which event should you choose for your campaigns? Well, obviously you are running ads because you want to make more sales. So purchase is your favorite event and that's why I always recommend you to go with purchase for your campaigns. But sometimes if your budget is very limited and very small, you can't go with purchase. And I'm going to explain to you this a little bit more. When you start running your ads, your ads start in a phase we call the learning phase. Facebook used this phase in order to learn more about your business, about your customers, and in order to be able to optimize your ads and your ad sets and your whole campaign. In order to leave this learning phase and make sure that the algorithm is doing its best, you must get 25 to 50 purchases per week if purchase is your objective. Leaving the learning phase is important because it means that the algorithm is doing its best. But if you have some campaigns who are performing well without leaving the learning phase, it's totally fine. I see that all the time. I keep running the ads, I keep increasing the budget in order to leave the learning phase, but it's totally fine. Now, as I said before, purchase is the most valuable event and that's why we always look to reach it. However, in some cases, if your products are very expensive and your budget is limited, it would be a little bit hard to use purchase because if the budget is small and you are targeting a very expensive audience, maybe Facebook will not be even delivering your ads if the objective is purchase because you are aiming for too much with a small budget. In this case, instead of aiming for purchase, I highly recommend you to go with something like add to cart or maybe view content, especially if you are just starting out. With the objective, as with anything else, you must test. Facebook ads is about testing. You must keep testing all the different options and scenarios in order to find the best scenario for your business and for your ads. Now that you know more about the objectives, I'm going back to my screen and I'm going to continue setting up my ad sets. So for event in here, I'm going to start with purchase. Remember, I didn't in here, I didn't in here uh, set up my aggregated events inside of my events manager and if you are planning to run ads you must do that after choosing your conversion event in here you can choose to use dynamic creatives i'm not going to talk a lot about dynamic creatives if you want me to create a video about this topic please let me know and i would be creating a full video about the different dynamic creatives options inside of the ads manager because there are multiple ones but when you use dynamic creatives, you give Facebook multiple texts, multiple titles, multiple images, and Facebook will be combining, like playing around with the combinations in order to give you the best title with the best description and the best photo. But well, you can definitely test this, but if you want to keep it simple, it's totally fine not to test it when you are just starting out. After the dynamic creatives, we have the budget and the schedule. And here I need to talk a lot about the budget. After that, you have the budget and optimization section. And I know that budget can be the trickiest part about running Facebook ads because most probably you have no idea about what's the right budget for your campaign. Well, this is totally normal, especially if your business is very new. In order to figure out the right budget for your campaigns, you must start first by, by knowing how much on average you pay in order to acquire one client. And we call this metric the average acquisition cost. If your business is new, so you have no idea what this number is because you didn't run ads before, so you don't know how hard or easy it is to acquire a client. And that's why choosing your budget when you are just starting out is tricky. 
So what I recommend you to do is to always start at least with double your margin. So if for example you are selling a product for $100 and your cost of delivery is $50, this means that your profit is $50, I highly recommend you to start with $100 as your budget. But I totally understand that this might be scary and especially that I'm talking about the ad set daily budget. So it's for example, in our case, $100 per ad set per day. And this can be scary to many people. I totally understand that. I totally understand that. But Facebook ads are risky and you need to invest money in order to learn and in order to help the algorithm to learn and in order to grow your business using them. You shouldn't be thinking about Facebook ads as a short-term game. You should be thinking about them as a long-term game. So you should be willing to invest now in order to make money tomorrow. So this means think about if I acquired a client today, how much money I'm going to make out of this client in the future, not only on the first purchase. And that's why email marketing is important because it helps you to retain your customers. So speaking again about the budget, if your product is above $100, I highly recommend you to at least start with $50. Below $50, it's nothing. So go at least with $50 per ad set per day. If your products are not expensive, like $20 or $30, you can go with $15 per day, $20 per day, something like that. Then when your campaigns are performing well, you can start scaling your campaigns each week by increasing the budget a little bit. I always look at the budget as a thing that also needs to be tested. So sometimes I start with a budget per ad set and I figure out that it's very small and it will not get me any results. So what I do instead is to combine multiple ad sets and increase the budget of the ad set. So instead of running three ad sets with $50 per ad set as daily budget, I would run one ad set combining maybe two or three ad set and I will give it a $150 per day as budget. This can affect your results because you're giving Facebook much flexibility in order to test and optimize. In this section in here, you precise your budget and schedule. In here, you can choose between daily budget or lifetime budget. I always recommend you to go with the daily budget. Then in here, you precise your ad set daily budget. If your ad account is brand new, I can I think you can't exceed $50 as a beginning. Let me try. So yeah, you can't. You have to start with $50. So this is the maximum allowed if your account is new. Later on, Facebook will allow you to go over $50. Don't worry. Under that, you have the schedule. So you can schedule the date and the hour. And in here, you can set an end date for the ad set. I don't recommend you to do that. Never set an end date. Okay, keep it running and kill it manually when you want to kill it. In here under more options, you can schedule the hours when you want your ads to show. I don't recommend you to do that at all. Okay, the more restrictions you put on the algorithm, the harder you make it for Facebook to find your potential customers. So keep it simple. Under the budget and schedule, you have the audience, and this is actually a very important part. As I told you at the beginning of this video, on Facebook, we target people based on their interests or their behavior. When you know your potential customers well, you can know what kind of interests only apply to them. So let's say, for example, I sell accessories for book lovers. It's easy to figure out what kind of blogs, magazines, websites or maybe coffee shops or maybe brands a book lover might be interested in. Use Google to research your customer's avatar and to know them more. If you have anyone around you who is your potential customer, ask them about their interests and try to find common interests between all of your potential customers or most of them. There is a very nice trick that I like to use. I go to Facebook pages of my competitors. I go to the people who like those pages and I search for the things they like. I create a list and all the common interests between at least let's say 20 to 100 customers, I try to include them inside of my targeting because in this way I'm making sure that I'm finding something that's common between my potential customers and it's relevant to them. I also recommend you not to use the narrowing down or the exclude inside of your ad set setup because whenever you create so many rules, you make it harder for the algorithm to find your potential customers. 
Well, I know years ago I used to recommend you to use the narrowing down in order to make sure that you are reaching your potential customers, but you have already done this with your interests and you already made sure that they are only relevant for your potential customers. So don't use the narrow down inside of Facebook unless, unless you have a very big audience that you want to narrow, so you can use one condition, but that's it. For the exclude, you can exclude your old customers if you are advertising for the same product and you don't want to lose a lot of money. So yeah, exclude your old customers, but that's it. So going back in here, I can choose between creating a new audience, which is the thing I do at the acquisition level, or I can use saved audiences. We are going to talk about saved audiences later when we are talking about the retargeting campaigns. In here, you can choose between existing audiences. I'm going to skip that. In here, you define the location. So if you are selling, for example, inside of the United Kingdom or inside of France, you define this in here. In here, you define the age and the gender. And unless you are, your product doesn't work for specific ages or for specific genders, I recommend you to keep these two criteria as they are. Don't play around with them. Keep them as they are and the algorithm will know where to put your ads and how to find your potential customers. Under that, you have the detailed targeting and in here you start entering your interests. Let's go back to the example of book lovers and let's say, for example, I'm starting with Harry Potter, which is a very famous book. So let's see if I can find it in here. I'm going to type Harry Potter. So as you can see, I have found it. So this is the first interest I'm gonna start with. When you put the interest in here, you can see the audience sizes in here. Well, in some ad accounts, I'm not being able to see the audience sizes under the conversion campaigns. So I'm creating trial traffic campaigns in order to see the audience sizes. In some other accounts like this one, for example, I can see the audience size. I'm gonna add another interest other than Harry Potter. Let's say I'm going to put Agatha Christie. It's very important to note that lately Facebook forced the use of expansion targeting. I'm going to explain this to you. Well, now, for example, we have told Facebook that we want to target people who are interested in Harry Potter and in Agatha Christie. Well, Facebook is telling us, OK, I know that you want to target people who are interested in Harry Potter and Agatha Christie, but if I think that some other people are also interested in your products, I'm going to show them the products and the ads, even though they are not in your target audience. Well, is that something good or bad? I think that it's hard to judge. In some ad accounts, we didn't actually see any difference in results. In other ad accounts, we have seen better results. And in other ones, we have seen worse results. I believe that this option is bad for the new ad accounts, but it's good for the ad accounts who are already like at a little bit advanced stage. Maybe they have spent some thousands of dollars. The pixel is more trained. I'm not saying that to make you panic. I believe that whenever Facebook makes any decision, it's meant to improve the Facebook ads performance. So. This is what we have now. We can't remove this option anymore, so we need to work with it. Before, um, maybe a few months ago, we were able to choose bet between doing detailed targeting expansion and not. Now we don't have any option. So we need to go with it. We need to live with it and we need to continue learning how to create our campaign. So going back in here after deciding the interests in here, you can define the language. Well, if you are selling in a country where people only speak one language, like in USA or in UK or in France, you don't need to define the language. It's not that big of a deal. But if you are selling in a country where people speak multiple languages like Switzerland, you might need to define the language in here. In here, you have also more options. So if you want to go with other uh, targeting options, you can do that, like to use connections, people who engage with your page, stuff like that. I don't usually use it because I use it in a different way inside of the retargeting campaigns. Now, after this, you can save the audience or not. You move on in here to the placements. 
After that, we have the placements and you can choose between automatic placements or manual placements. I recommend you to keep the automatic placements on, especially if you are just starting out. Later on, after a while, when you start optimizing your campaigns and analyzing your results, you might find, for example, that some placements are better for your ads. So in this case, you will start optimizing even with the placements. But if you are just starting out, keep your placements automatic and this way Facebook will be able to test different placements and tell you which placements are better for you. After the placements, we have the optimization and delivery. And in here, I don't want you to change anything. When you click in here, you will see more options. You have the attribution setting, the when you are charged and the delivery type. We are not going to touch these two. We are going to talk about the attribution settings. Well, since the iOS 14 update, Facebook has been changing the attribution settings a lot. After the update directly, Facebook changed the attribution settings to seven days after clicking and one day after viewing and made it the default option. Then a few months later, Facebook changed that to seven days after clicking. Then now we are back to the seven days after clicking and one day after viewing. So you can go with this default option. I recommend you to go with either this one or the seven days after clicking. If you want me to explain more about the attribution settings and what this means exactly, let me know in the comment section below and I can explain this to you more. Now, after setting up your ad set, you move on to the ads level. In here, you need to enter all the information related to your ad. So you need to put the ad copy, the title, the creative, everything else. I'm going to show you what kind of creatives you must be testing in 2022 in a while. But for now, you just have to keep in mind that you must test different ads formats. So don't go only with videos, although videos are very good, but you need also to test photos and to test carousels. Remember, people are different and each one of us prefer to consume a different type of content. Some people prefer photos, others prefer videos, others prefer carousels. So it's very important to always test and try different creative types. Now I want to talk a little bit about the acquisition campaign structure. Well, under each of your campaigns, you can go with a maximum of five ad sets. I recommend you to go only with four ad sets. In each of these ad sets, you must be targeting a different audience. Remember, we are running the acquisition campaign in order to acquire new customers, in order to get new people to know us. We are targeting cold audiences. So use your ad sets to target people based on their interests. Here, there is something very important that I want to mention. Many people rely heavily on the lookalike audiences inside of their acquisition campaign. Well, this is not something I recommend you to do. I believe that lookalike audiences are very important, but you shouldn't be building your whole uh, ad strategy upon the lookalike audiences, especially now after iOS 14 update. I believe that the lookalike audiences should be part of your strategy, but they shouldn't be your whole strategy. Sometimes I meet clients who only target lookalike audiences. If you don't know what lookalike audiences mean, please let me know in the comment section below and I would be definitely creating a video about them. But in short, when you create a lookalike audience, you tell Facebook to go out there and to search people who are similar to the people you are using as your custom audience base. So for example, you can tell Facebook that this is my customer's list. Go out there and create a lookalike audience out of this customer list. So Facebook will be going out there, searching for people who have similar interests and behaviors as your old customers. Well, if, you, if your business has been running for a while, your lookalike audiences can be very powerful. And in this case, I highly recommend you to use them. But if you are just starting out, so most probably you don't have a customer's list and you can't start even with a lookalike audience. Now, after creating your acquisition campaign, we move on to creating your retargeting campaign. In the retargeting campaign, we want to target audiences or people who already showed interest in our brand. With the retargeting campaigns, we aim to create new touch points with people who already know our brand. So we target audiences like Facebook engagers, Instagram engagers, people who viewed content on our store, people who added to cart or our newsletter list, 
or maybe people who initiated the checkout. If you are advertising for a totally new product, you don't need to exclude your old customers from the retargeting campaign. You can even keep them. But if you wish, you can definitely exclude them. I'm going to move to my Facebook Ads Manager to show you how to create those custom audiences and how to add them inside of your retargeting campaign. So I will start first by creating my retargeting campaign. I'm going to choose conversion as the objective, definitely. And I'm going to uh, rename the campaign simply by retargeting. And in here, I will go to my ad set. But this time, instead of filling out the audience interests, I'm going to use my custom audiences. So I go in here and in here, I click in here and I name my custom audiences. Since this is a new ad account, so I don't have any custom audience, I'm going to, to show you how to create the custom audiences and what are the custom audiences that you must retarget inside of your ads campaign. So since this is a new ad account, so I don't have any custom audiences in here, but I'm going to show you how to create your custom audiences and what are the custom audiences that you must retarget. From here, I'm going to click on search and I'm going to click on audiences. I will start by creating a custom audience and I'm going to use the website as a starting point. I'm going to click on next. In here, I, I'm telling Facebook to collect the data from my pixel and I am uh, creating an audience for all website visitors. And in here, I need to precise the retention days. So with this setup in here, I'm telling Facebook that I'm creating an audience of people who viewed my website, who visited my website in the last 30 days. However, with website visitors, you can go up to 100 80 days and that this is the option I recommend you to go with. So why is it good to go with big windows? Because if you are just starting out and your ad account is still new, this means that your audiences are most probably small. So in order to give Facebook more data to work with, we make our windows bigger. But even though if you have big audiences, I always recommend you to go with the biggest windows ever, then you start you, uh, testing smaller windows with time. You need to test the different retention windows. So maybe you start with 180, then you move on to 90 days and so on. You can guess which is the perfect retention window before testing it. After putting the options in here, you just name the audience and you write some descriptions. If you want to create an audience of Instagram engagers or Facebook engagers, you go in here to Instagram account, you click on next, and in here, you put the retention uh, time to be 365 days. This is the biggest window ever. So you create all of your custom audiences. I'm talking about people who engage with your Instagram page, with Facebook engagers. I'm talking about people who added to cart, people who viewed content and people who initiated checkout. And you use all of these audiences inside of your retargeting ad set. If you are using any mail marketing software like Klaviyo, for example, you can export your newsletter list and also add it in here as a custom audience and target this list inside of your retargeting ad set. I'm going quickly to create two custom audiences to show you how to target them inside of the ads manager. So I'm going to name this one retargeting uh, Instagram engagers. Then I'm going in here to click on custom audience. So now I have created these two audiences. I'm going back to my ads manager to show you how to add them inside of your retargeting ad set. So I will select my retargeting campaign and in here inside of my ad set, I'm going to click on edit. And when I scroll down in here, inside of audience, I'm going to choose from here, 
custom audiences i'm going to choose view content and i will add the second one instagram engagers and i can add all of my custom audiences you can see the list of custom audiences and you can add all of your remaining custom audiences I recommend you to create all of these custom audiences and to target all of them inside of your retargeting ad set. If your audience sizes are big, you can divide your retargeting campaign so you can in one ad set retarget Facebook engagers and Instagram engagers and in the second ad set you can retarget people who uh, made an action on your store so we are talking about people who viewed content, added to cart or initiated a checkout. You can also create a dedicated campaign in order to uh, retarget your old customers so you do cross-selling you try to sell them new products or you try to show them new offers and so on and now we have reached the part three of this video where we are going to talk about your creatives so what kind of creatives you should be using and how often you should be testing new creatives or introducing new creatives to your campaigns well you need to think about your creatives in the same way we have discussed your campaign level or your funnel steps. So we have divided your campaigns between acquisition and retargeting and your creatives must be different between your acquisition campaigns and your retargeting campaigns because each of these campaigns are targeting different audiences with different experience with your brand. So for example, for the acquisition campaigns, you need to use creatives that focus on the product benefits that show people how to use the product or what does the product do if your product is very complicated maybe even your creatives need to be educational in order to explain to your customers what they are seeing and what this product does exactly well for the retargeting we are looking for something else we are looking to enforce trust to push people into buying from us the people we are targeting with the retargeting campaigns already know us, already know our brand, already know our products. So we need them to trust us enough in order to buy the products. So we focus on things like social proof, reviews, maybe even demonstrations, unboxing, lifestyle photos, because we want people to see the product and trust us in order to buy it. In each of your ad sets, I recommend you to have three to four creatives. And I recommend you to choose different type of creative formats. So test photos, test carousels, test videos, test short videos and long videos. It's very important to keep testing in order to know what your audience will like. As for creative types, I recommend you to use UGC videos or user generated content videos. These videos are videos that look like they are they have been created by normal people using their phones, nothing very fancy, nothing very branded. This type of creative is performing very well and it has been performing very well for the past two years. Let me now show you some examples of UGC videos I recommend you to test. You can start first by product demonstrations. Those UGC videos show how to use the product and what are the benefits out of this product. They are very easy. You just show your product on action and you focus on the most important benefits of your products. You can also create unboxing videos in order to show your customers the package, what they will receive inside of the package and so on. You can also create videos where you focus on the solutions your product offers. So for example, you can create a video like this, three things I love about this product or three things made this product my best purchase in 2022. Or let's say, for example, I'm advertising to some kind of makeup kit. I can create a video that talk about how to get your makeup done in three minutes using this kit. The most important thing you need to focus on while you are creating UGC content is that your content needs to look organic. So don't be fancy. Use your iPhone, record a simple video using it, and that's it. You can also do voiceovers, get creative with it. The most important thing is to keep it look organic. In addition to the previous ideas, I highly recommend you to test testimonials creatives. So you can ask your old customers to record videos for you reviewing your products or your services and you can use them also for those videos keep it simple try to make them look like organic content from instagram or facebook nothing fancy coming out with good creative ideas can be a little bit tricky especially if you don't consider yourself as a creative person that's why you have facebook ads library to help you find good ideas for your creatives 
and because creatives are very essential inside of my Facebook ads masterclass there is a very big section about creatives with more than 14 lectures in this section I show you what kind of creatives you should be using how to create those creatives and I give you how to tutorials to follow also inside of this section I give you tens and tens of examples and inspirations to learn from so if you are looking to master Facebook ads and to actually profit from the power of Facebook and Instagram ads, I highly recommend you to go down to the description and to check my Facebook ads masterclass. And now we have reached the final part of this video where we are going to talk about optimizations and results. The first thing you need to keep in mind is that you need to keep your ads running at least one week before starting to analyze or optimize your campaigns. It's very important to give Facebook enough time in order to get the whole week like the weekend and the weekdays in order to judge the campaign so keep your ads running for seven days before touching them analyzing your results and learning how to read all of these metrics and how to learn from them is very important for your ad because if you don't know how to read your results you will never know how to optimize them that's why I have created a separate video to show you how to analyze and read your campaign results so I highly recommend you to watch this video it will help you to understand all of these metrics and what they mean this video will be published next week on this YouTube channel so stay tuned if you want to improve your business and your Facebook ads campaigns and you are looking for a professional help, you can always check out the services I offer by clicking on the link you will find below in the description. Also, you can DM me on Instagram if this is easier for you. Thank you for watching this video and for staying up until the end. I truly appreciate that. Before leaving, I want to invite you to like this video, to subscribe to my channel and to hit the notification bell because in this way you will get notified each time I publish a new video. See you next week. Bye bye.